Welcome to Here Here, the podcast where you get a VIP behind the scenes look at the broad collective of music venues and festivals that make Buffalo the music destination it is. I'm your host, Bentley. In this episode, we head to Buffalo Ironworks in the Cobblestone District to talk with owners Josh Holtzman and Grace Vesneski about the evolution of the club. We get to meet an Ironworks super fan and season ticket holder, Melissa Stadler. And finally, Michael Ganser from Aqueous joins us for an introspective conversation about what Buffalo Ironworks means to him. So excited to be here with the owners of Buffalo Ironworks, Josh Holzman and Grace Vesneski, who I have known in the concert scene for a long time here in Buffalo. So that's why it's so exciting to be here in the business that you run together. And it's been an interesting story. Before my start here, I was managing and touring with the local band Aqueous. And we were kind of all over the country and doing things. And uh, this venue had recently opened in 2013. And I remember us being at that point where we outgrew Nietzsche's and we were looking for a bigger room. And I just heard about this new venue that's coming you know, downtown. It's called Ironworks. And truthfully, at the time, it kind of felt more like a sports bar mixed with a music venue, like playing off the Sabres, but also having music every now and then. So we did our show here. And I just remember leaving that night being like, this place is incredible. Like it has the structure and the bones. Like they designed it and did it all right. It just needs a little help, you know, guiding it in the right direction. If that's really the way that they want to go with a music venue. So Josh, how old is this building? So 118 well, years. Right, we did the math. When was it built? 1906. So like, I mean, that is history. And we're sitting in the historic cobblestone district, um, which is, you know, one of the oldest areas in Buffalo. And, you know, the cobblestone street, you get that. It, it, you know, shows what a time used to be. I mean, this building used to be a manufacturing building and a foundry. And there's a lot when you start looking around the room that we were able to and the developers were able to keep original just to showcase that. And it's not like just come in and strip everything and, and make it brand new. It's like, no, we want this to feel like you were in a building from 1906 with all the modern updates that you need to produce and, and live music and, and actually be able to function as a business. We're talking about the vibe and the building. There's a lot of great venues in this area that we've been talking about on this podcast too, on Here Here. What sets this venue apart and specifically, what is the music niche here? Because there's a definite, I feel like there's a music niche here at Ironworks. There's a vibe. I mean, I think, <laughs> I think you, you really started it as a jam, a jam venue. And it kind of evolved in the scene and at, in the reputation it has in that niche jam venue, jam scene. But I think we've evolved a bit. Like now we're doing, we're doing everything. Like we did a puppet show last week. Like a, <laughs> tears, a tears for fears puppet show. Wait. Um, and it's sold out. Sold <laughs> like, so those unique n niche ones are also the types of shows that are coming through that we love. We love to like jump on those, those weird ones that are like, not everybody's gonna go after because the room can do that. You can fit a, a show in here that's gonna pull 150 up into our full cap. So like, we can kind of gamble on some of the ones that might be a little, you know, out of realm versus just staying within like that jam, you know, specific yeah, genre. Yeah, because I, I wanna say, I'm giving you all the credit for this and it could have existed somewhere else, but was it the Cure versus the Smiths dance parties? I feel like, or was it? That, was it so Cure? great thing about that is, um, shout out to Billy Page, yep. uh, because she really started it all those years ago um, uh, with her partner Eric and Transmission Dance Party. It was kind of like their promoter tag, Yeah. but they had been doing it for a while. I think this year was either the 19th or 20th, but I will say like that, the mix of this room and that event and then moving it from, I think they were doing it at Mohawk Place for a while and then came here and have been here for like the last like 10 years. I mean, that both helped grow their event and also helped really put this venue on the map almost with a whole new demo that wasn't coming. And that I do remember was one of the first out, first sold out events that we had in this room ever. And what an interesting night that is every <laughs> single time. And I'm always like, it will see, because it, it runs from like 7 p.m. to like 2 a.m. So it'll see like over a thousand people. Um, we could fit 500 at once, but obviously there was like, there's an earlier crowd, then it gets real heavy in the middle, and then there's a late night crowd too. But 
Yeah, you know, to Grace's point, like we we try to do around 200 shows a year. So, you know, that kind of comes to four to five shows a week. And there's only so many jam bands and there's only so many, you know, that are in Buffalo or coming through Buffalo. So, you know, being able to be flexible and having a room that can really do amazing with a country show, a rock show, a metal show, a hip hop show, jam, funk, soul. Uh, Puppet. Puppets. <laughs> all the puppets. puppets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it's been fun and it, and it allows us to, we've always wanted it to match, you know, kind of like Buffalo and Western New York's just view on things. Like we are a mixed pot. We have everybody likes something different, but we have a place that you can come, you know, and safely enjoy it and see something different every night of the week. There's an ecosystem of, of Buffalo's music scene. So like we found ourselves in kind of that niche of like, you know, shout out to Mohawk who, who does kind of bring in a lot of acts that then we take and then we kind of build a relationship with, you know, those acts who then we send to either Asbury or Ballroom or like the next size up. And that seems to be like we've found ourselves in that level of this ecosystem that we love because we've established that niche of the, of the capacity size, the 500. And you can have an intimate show. You can still have that like unique setting that we can, you know, be, have the experience with everybody as they come in the room and it's not too big, still manageable. And I think that we found a lot of artists still want to return back to this size because of all of those those examples. Yeah, I mean, I think we very much are a music city. You know, I think when people think of the top music cities, it'll be like Nashville and New York and L.A. and Austin. Um, but I think we fall right in that music scene as far as how vibrant we are, how much local talent there is, um, and then also how much national talent comes through. And it is it's interesting. We all know it here, like 80s bands crush like <laughs> it's so funny. Um, country is just on, you know, its trajectory right, to yeah, just right take now. over the country. So great. So you've worked with a lot of different artists in your past life. Now, everybody from, you know, Jack White to Aqueous to, you know, you've you've, you've done it all. Um, when acts play at Ironworks, uh, what are some of the things they say about the venue? What makes them, some of the people that keep coming back, what are the things that they enjoy about the venue? We definitely have a very uh, unique touch as far as the space goes. I've seen a lot of green rooms, I've seen a lot of you know back of houses, and ours is definitely a bit different than most. We have a full um, communal artist hang area upstairs that has two papa shots. You know, basketball can, can keep anybody entertained and happy. It's also a way to separate from the business side of things, so our, if artists wanna come here and just be like, I worked all day, I'm just gonna go spend 20 minutes bracing against my best friend and papa shot, you know, it just seems, to give them the ability to separate. In addition up there, there's like two, you know, sitting areas. There's um, a full weightlifting space that like, I know specifically Moon Hooch loves. They're a band that comes in here very often and are very happy that it's there. It's there in there for hours <laughs> yes. before the show. Yeah, hours, hours. Um, but I actually, I worked an event in Massachusetts this past weekend and uh, a band member tapped me on the shoulder and I turned around and he's like, are you Grace from Ironworks? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, I just have to say the green room and the entire upstairs is just like nothing like we've ever seen. And we travel over and I'm just like, oh my God, I'm going to cry. <laughs> you know, because that's exactly what we want. We don't necessarily just want to make it a unique experience for the fans because that is definitely a very, very important aspect of our entire business model. But it's every single person that walks in the room because it's it's our reputation nationally. So for us to leave a bad taste in someone's mouth, even even just like little, like for us to just offer a space for them to put their feet up or a space to shower or a space to like, you know, separate, we have it and it shows. Yeah, no, I agree. I think what we've heard the most is best green room we've ever seen. <laughs> and that's not saying that other green rooms aren't, but I think that, that that's one lasting thing that I've always heard, you know, from bands coming in. Um, and I know the same with you. And, you know, I think also just the, the atmosphere of the people that come out and of Buffalo and, you know, shout out to our production team. Everybody's always like the production is just on point. And we are, we're lucky to get bands that are both on their way up and both on their way down. So we've had a lot of bands where this is like the biggest place they've ever played, you know, and we get to not like teach them how to do it, but they get a great example of what it's going to be like if you continue on this path. Um, and then we get the bands who are rather humble that, that have done the big shows and are on their way down. And they're just like, we love the, that this can be more of an intimate feeling, you know, we can still pack the place and have fun. But I think it's cool. And one more question before we go play Papa Shop, because I did not realize <laughs> that was up there, because I'm usually down here. Yes, um, how would you explain 
the crowds that come here, the audience, because that is such a special part of Ironworks as well. It is. I would say, you know, diverse and fun. Um, you know, one of the things we've always wanted to set here is that it's yes, we are a business, but like we want it to feel like you're going to your friend's house and you're going to see all your friends. And it's it's just that simple. And like that's what we found, you know, when we started a season pass program in like 2017, you know, it was it was amazing where people could actually buy a pass that gets you to every single show for the entire year. And that formed its own little season pass community, which was great. Um, and we just find like we have such a loyal fan base, which is amazing. And even more so recently, like when the fires happened down the street, I have never had more outreach. And I know the same thing with Grace about people worried about this venue. And it's like we get caught up in it a lot. But I think we were just like, wow, we didn't know people cared that much. And it was and I, nice. It's to amazing see that support. Yeah, yeah. it was yeah. amazing. But the people that come here are just they're incredible. They're very easygoing. A lot of it does go back to like the jam hub that this started at. So, you know, the jam band community is very faithful and, and very easygoing and like they will travel for music. They will spend their money on music and they will come on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, doesn't matter. And then it's nice because we get to see all the other fan bases come in like country and metal and hip hop and indie um, and funk. And it's just so the diversity is, is I think my favorite part. And you know. different things come with different crowds. So we learn a lot through the different genre shows. So if we were just one specific genre, I think you learn something from every show, but we learn, you know, like the mosh pitting is always a thing at certain shows. Like that's, we want to be supportive of the, the entire experience, but there's a safety aspect as far as that goes. We want to make sure that the atmosphere is safe and, and for all. And it seems like majority of our patrons do the same. They create a safe atmosphere for each other. They take care of each other. I'm really thankful for the clientele that we have here because they, they seem to give us the feedback when we need it. They do praise us a lot. We get a lot of like personal emails of people's, you know, testimonies and like their experiences or something that we did to make their night you know, more unique. And that's what, again, my favorite aspect of us being the size that we are is that we still can do the like unique things. I can give someone that I can watch upstairs dancing at the front of the stage all night, like a, a t-shirt or a poster or something from the night. Cause like I could see that. Whereas the larger shows, I wasn't always able to, to have that. Unique touch. Yeah, forever independent, and I think that's important. You know, <laughs> I love like, it. That's forever. A, that's a great explanation. Yeah, I really want to keep um, it that way. This is a very special place, and I thank you because I know you're both very busy uh, for taking the time to Always. talk about Ironworks today. And thank I look you forward to more us. shows here. Definitely, thank you. Anytime. Thank you. I've always felt like if you want to get the inside scoop on a music venue, you talk to the people who show up night after night, no matter who's playing. Enter Melissa Stadler, a season pass holder since the very beginning. Melissa, you are a Buffalo Ironworks season pass holder. So that means you can go to any show you want all year long. Absolutely. When did you become a season pass holder? We've been season pass holders since the beginning. You and your husband, yeah, right? As soon as they were available, we were jumping right on that. So how many shows do you think you've seen at Ironworks? Oh my gosh, it has to be in the hundreds by now. <laughs> really? Yes, we're here all the time. We call it our second home. We're, it's our home away from home with awesome people, the staff, the fellow concert goers. It's just a really wonderful place. A little escape from your day life as a lawyer. That's right. Your other <laughs> life. I'm sure it's not just daytime. That's right. What are some recent shows that you've seen here or that you're planning to see here? Well, I'm going to be back tonight, which is very exciting. Um, Mike Ganser from Aqueous, who's an incredible mu musician, is going to be playing um, with Sophista Funk. And so we're bringing my stepdaughter, my husband will be coming, and you know everybody that we consider family here will also be here. It's going to be a good one tonight. Which one of your shows stands out as a favorite? Oh, gosh, that's almost impossible to answer, only because they're all so good. And they provide such a different variety of bands. Virtually every night of the year, you can walk into this place and see someone different. Yeah. And a lot of those band members have become good friends. So I can't really answer that question honestly without maybe annoying some people. <laughs> <laughs> that's a true music lover right there, because I cannot ever answer those questions either. So I know that you are you are in it. Over the years you've been going here, do you remember an instance where you said, this is my place? Oh my gosh. 
I have to tell you, it's so hard to pinpoint that because every time I walk in here, it just feels like family. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone from the owners, the staff, the ticket takers, the security guards, the bartenders, they've all become like an extended family and very dear friends. So it's just a wonderful feeling, positive energy and amazing vibes when you walk in, which is why we love it here so much. So outside of being a music venue and having a variety of music, you also feel like it's your home bar. 100%. <laughs> yeah. Which is why we're sitting at the bar right yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> if you had to tell somebody who was unfamiliar with Ironworks, maybe somebody from outside the area, um, and you were maybe trying to convince them to visit the venue because you've had such a great experience, what would you tell them? Well, I'd buy their ticket. Or I tell them I'd give them a money back refund if they didn't have a good time. Because every time you walk in here, you're going to have a good time. Um, you're going to have a really superior live music experience. You can't get anywhere else. And, and honestly, it's just the vibes, the people, the, the concert goers. It, it's just like a big family in here. And the music is exceptional to boot. So come, you won't regret it. That's a really strong endorsement that you would buy somebody's ticket. <laughs> that is, yes, I will. That is a strong one. <laughs> Double down. And if you had to pick a song that explained Ironworks to you, to you or makes you think of Ironworks, what would it be? It would have to be This Must Be the Place by the Talking Heads because home is where I want to be. And this is our second home, our second fam. And we just love it here so much. Thanks so much, Melissa. I can't wait to see you at another show here or maybe you just sit at the bar and have a beverage Absolutely. with you here Thank you for at having me. Ironworks. <laughs> Thank you. Buffalo Ironworks hosts hundreds of shows each year, so the list of musicians to talk to is long. Immediately, I thought of Michael Ganser, originally of Aqueous. He's also performed with several other bands, including Sophistifunk, and he's played at Ironworks since the very beginning. Mike, thank you for taking time with us today here uh, to talk about how special of a place Buffalo Ironworks is. You have toured all over the world with various bands, Aqueous, obviously, has played here a bunch of times and at Cobblestone Live. And is that how you met Josh? No. So Josh and I go back even further than that because uh, <clears throat> so Aqueous was my longtime band that mm -hmm. uh, we just took that off the road in 2023. But I met Josh through that venture because he was seeing our shows um, in – regards to our band's legacy, what would be considered, or history, or what would be considered the early days. And we connected then as friends and then as business partners, and he became Aqueous's first, like, re real manager. And that's not to discredit the people that came before him, but the it's different when you're, like, booking at little venues in North Tonawanda to trying to step into more of a regional or national thing. And so Josh came along, and his skill set um, <clears throat> in the management realm, and also he used to do our merchandising, and really all the things that, like, a small band could never have afforded. He was doing those things um, just for the love of it. And he really helped our career like take the step. And right when it got to the point of like growing to a bigger scale, he passed it off to a different, you know, the thing that would help us move forward. And then he's, you know, became more entrenched at his role at Ironworks. And as they say, the rest is history. So I've, and we were also roommates too, for like a oh, lot of that boy. time. So um, all, all kinds of I have lots of stories that I'll share for another, I'll save for another. Yeah, time. I was going to say, I'm not going to ask you the roommate stories because we would be here for three hours and I don't know if Josh would want those stories. No, and I don't, I think they, they would, you, it wouldn't be allowed on. <laughs> Do you remember your first show at Ironworks? Mm hmm Yeah, I do actually. And it's funny because I, I think when you asked that, I just realized just how many times I've played here. And it's yeah. like a lot because Aqueous is what most people, you know, would associate me with, especially here in Buffalo, but... I've done a lot of work either very quietly on the side or loudly on the side, but some of that ranging from like, a, I have a metal punk, you know, band that's called Death Kings with one of the members of Umphreys McGee and we've done a show here and I have a Steely Dan tribute called Dirty Work and we've done many shows here and Aqueous did so many shows. It was like a real important place for our, our band in terms of the growth we were experiencing when you're not big enough for, you know, Town Ballroom or a chaise, but you have a, a venue that's operating at that same level. It's just, I guess I'm having a lot of reflections of how much time, it's almost blowing my mind right here live. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the first one must have been, 
and hopefully someone might correct me on this. They're going to get really mad and comment on YouTube. <laughs> they will. So that's just, just going to say I'm sorry now. <laughs> but uh, it must have been, I think, an AQ show because we were looking to upgrade from Nietzsche's because mm -hmm. we had kind of outgrown it and we, you know, we played there as many times as we could and really enjoyed it, but we just needed a space that accommodated more, but we knew it was too big of a risk to move all the way up. So, yeah. so Ironworks became a home for years while we continued because growth is like people don't realize it's, you know, a lot of times by the time you hear about a band, they've been doing it for 10 years before that. It's just a slow chipping away. And Josh knows that because he used to be at the shows. Like there was a show, we ended a tour in North Carolina where there was two people there and 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 Josh and then the two of them left and it was just us and Josh in the room playing and then I think we finished the show and drove home but um so it's it's all to say that Ironworks like you know I have a lot of <clears throat> fond memories here but it must have been in the in Aquia show to start at least yeah and then that was a launching pad to festivals mm -hmm. we were talking about audiences in the thousands <laughs> yeah well I mean even just you know locally what they were building with, you know, the Cobblestone Festival mm -hmm. and, and even just, um, you know, some of the shows here. I mean, it's a, it's a really cool size where you get, you can still pack like a really big audience here. And so the band feels the impact of like how intense and cool that is. Yeah. The energy is really palpable. But then, you know, it's also intimate enough where like the fan can really see and experience everything in a different way than some of the shows as you kind of scale upward, you know. Would you say that it's been easy to find compatibility to the vibe of your music and different bands in Ironworks? Like, is there a connection for you with the music as well? Do you mean as far as like as in regards to Ironworks place in it all? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Because I mean, even just going back to all the beautiful vinyl that we're surrounded yeah. <laughs> by. And even if you were to just look at their schedule right now. They accommodate such a wide range of music. Yeah. Like you've got um, the Suicide Machines, who are like a, a really like I could not believe. I texted Josh when they booked them. Like I thought I would have had to ask him to book them. <laughs> kind of thing. You know, and even when I was walking up, I just noticed all the like the CKY and like the diversity of acts. Yeah. And there'll be like really great. I, even tonight, I'm playing a show with Sophista Funk, mm -hmm. which is a hip hop trio. You know, yeah. and and Aqueous was a jam band. But one night we did, you know, the band Cake. Yeah. One of my all-time favorite bands, as they say in the movie Office Space, I celebrate their entire catalog. <laughs> we did it. a night here that will always stand out to me that was like, you know, because Aqueous was, you know, was a jam band, but also like dipped, we wrote songs and, you know, and we were very influenced by everything, but we all collectively loved Cake. And so we did a Cakeous set oh. here. <laughs> and it was like a thing where we did the first set just our own and then the second set we blended our music. And it was like one of those moments that was just like so cool and so yeah. specific we only ever did that one time and so it's stuff like that that you remember a bit more than you know at least for me once I started touring a lot um, there's things you know of course beautiful memories I have out there but it's usually the formative ones that stick you yeah know? for sure now you've traveled all over are there any areas of the country or of the world or venues that when you go there that remind you of ironworks or similar vibes no, um, and I and I mean that as a compliment, um, and that's also a compliment to the uniqueness of other venues around the country mm -hmm. because there's people. It's a rarity, but usually you find, you know, if you're lucky, in in certain cities there will be at least one venue where there's people that care, and that like I think is all that it really takes with anything good in life is just to like you just someone that really wants to do a good job, and I think. You know, you'd have to ask Josh if this, I, but I always wondered if some of those experiences on the road, like when he was touring with us, like we, we were talking about the green room before our interview, but what that word can mean from <laughs> venue to venue when you're on the come up, it can be a closet. It can be like nothing. It can yeah. be, you know, there might be no space. And when you come here, even if you're the support band, um, which every band will be at some point in their career and it's a weird place to be you already feel uncomfortable and so yeah. like it's not my show but I'm here but I, and I'm supposed to be but like here if even if you're support there's a dedicated space for you and then the headliner has their own dedicated space like that has a cat like a, it's clean it's yeah. clean <laughs> and it has like think about like a hotel yeah. and essentially what you would want out of that experience like you don't you want it to be clean and warm and and lit in a way that's not stressing you out and like you know the, all this just normal things that any 
person would want. Yeah. And in our work, there's not an, a standards in that way. I mean, you know, you start to hold your own, yeah. but there's not like an HR department or something <laughs> no, like, you, you take know, those things for granted. Right. Yeah. Until you get, you know, and then you, until you get to places that don't have them. And when you come here, it, you know, it's extremely comfortable. Um, and that is like, and you feel safe. And like, that is what goes like, that is really all that goes into putting on a great show. Yeah. It's like feeling good. Yeah. You know? And how would you explain, you have a following definitely in Buffalo. How would you explain the music scene and fans in Buffalo? I think that if you were to sort of like put aside the like particular genre that most people, most of the fans that I have are in, which is mostly like jam band, improv, like lengthy guitar solos and stuff. I think to sort of bring the average, any a person that is into like any music of any kind, I would compare it to like how the Bills Mafia is like it's that same chaotic energy you know what I mean like that like it like over the top but like very proud like Buffalo thing it's like you know I don't even have to further explain (laughs) it's a great analogy yeah it's the same thing every time that the band grew or took a step when we would come home and do a show many of which would be here um you know for several years especially when the band was having a lot of our like exciting moments of like going from a local band you know it's like crowds would really make us feel that like appreciation like they we were their band yeah you know what I mean and I realized it was like that honestly helped me frame it later on like just as you learn to become a professional and what it means to have balance and stuff it was easier to like think of it doing doing something like for and with the city, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, like, cause Buffalo, we're all proud. Like I, you yeah. know, we all want the bills to kill it and the Sabres <laughs> to kill it. And even when they don't, we don't care, you know? Yeah. And honestly, AQ, like Aqueous was the same way. We came really far yeah. and got really close, but it's just a very hard game to win. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, right now we're on a break and that's okay. Yeah. Um, and it's afforded me some interesting opportunities, but it's all to say that, you know, Buffalo is a great city to be from cause people are really passionate here. So the same way that fans in Buffalo will follow the team to other cities, did you were you seeing Buffalo fans at other shows? <laughs> yeah, I still do. I mean, yeah. it's a, yeah, of course. And and it's funny because in the beginning, I mean, I could have probably told you the names of like the seven people that were coming to see us, but those people ended up being the ones that would really like plant the seeds. They would tell a friend in Chicago or tell a friend in and it would always be like, "Hey, my friend in Buffalo told me, my friend in Canada told me, my friend, you know, it was always this area." And um, and also, uh, you've traveled like you know that anytime you tell anyone you're from Buffalo, they're like, "Hey, I got a cousin in Buffalo." <laughs> My sister yeah. lives in Amherst, or, you yeah. know, whatever it is, like, it's just like that. So, yeah. so yeah. How would you, if there was somebody from outside the area that was considering, you know, doing a show run, maybe they were going to Toronto or New York and they, a fan wanted to come to a show in Buffalo, how would you explain shows in Buffalo or get them to come to Buffalo to a show? I mean, I think Buffalo at this point is starting to have a reputation of its own that's different from even 10 years ago. I don't think it takes as much to get people here. I think if I would just warn people that, you know, if you're sensitive to the weather, then come at the right time. Yeah. You know, (laughs) that's really all I because otherwise it's a lovely city. I mean, I visited a lot, a lot of cities and Buffalo's up there and it really is that thing like the city of good neighbors. And sometimes it's from a management standpoint, like, hey, is it okay to send my guys here? Like, because, you know, and we try to always be on the same team in that way. But um, I mean, it's fun when I see people are coming here for several reasons. One is I know they're going to have a good experience. I'm like, hey, like you're going to like this venue kind of thing. Or if they ask, it's always nice to be able to give a good answer. You know, for me, it's also cool because when I'm not touring and, you know, I'm home long enough to to rest and stuff, I love to get out and see shows. So I'm I'm here all the time anyway. And so, you know, it's I I love what they're doing here. It's like a win win for me. Well, thank you so much for taking time with us. I know we were talking about days are busy for performers and musicians. It's not just the show. So we appreciate you talking about this great venue. We look forward to more shows with all of your projects. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's it's great to be here. Thank you. Mm That wraps up this episode of Here Here. Be sure to check out more episodes on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Buffalo is a unique music destination, and we uncover it all on Here Here. This program is produced by Buffalo Toronto Public Media for Visit Buffalo Niagara. I'm Bentley. Thanks for listening. <laughs>